Hello, everyone. Welcome to ASI Hour, another another session of ASI Hour with Dr. Wellard. Uh, Dr. Wellard, this is actually his third time being on ASI Hour. He's quite the fan favorite here with us and with you guys. Um, I see people slowly starting to trickle in. Feel free to uh, say hi on the chat box that you see. Um, tell us where you're joining from. I know Dr. Wellard is is currently in Kentucky, he tells me, and I'm actually in Tennessee. And I imagine that we have people from all over uh, joining us as usual. So feel free to, to say hi in the chat box here and tell us where, where you all are joining from. Also, make sure that you, okay, we have someone from Massachusetts, Florida, awesome, welcome. California, Bangladesh, amazing. What time is it in Bangladesh? Goodness, Texas. Okay, awesome. Well, welcome everyone. Montana, very nice. Guam, how fun. Uh, also, uh, Dr. Wellard is gonna be taking the last 15 to 20 minutes or so to answer any of your questions. So make sure that throughout the seminar, you guys are leaving your questions in the chat box. And then at the end, I'll jump back on here and ask him some of your questions. So definitely make sure uh, you guys are active in the chat. That's always fun to see. And uh, Dr. Wellard tonight is going to be talking about natural remedies and first aid. And when I heard that topic title, I was very intrigued. So I am very much looking forward to hearing this session as well, as I'm sure all of you are very, very excited. So I, uh, without further ado, I'm going to uh, have a quick word of prayer. And um, we're just so grateful that all of you guys have joined and so grateful to Dr. Wellard for joining us for a, a third time. Uh, it's very exciting. So uh, let's have a quick prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this beautiful day you've given us. And thank you for this opportunity for all of us to come together and uh, learn more about you and uh, the amazing things that we can accomplish through the things you have provided us on this earth through natural remedies. And uh, please be with Dr. Wellard as he speaks with us this evening and with each person that is listening tonight. We thank you so much for all your many blessings. In your name we pray. Amen. Uh, so, Dr. Wellard, um, I am going to just get you started with a, a question here, and then I'm going to turn everything over to you. So, I'm very curious how you got into herbal remedies to begin with, and natural remedies to begin with. Well, thank you, uh, Christy, for that question. Yes, uh, well, it was quite a few years ago, uh, growing up as a young person, uh, my mother was a herbalist and I was the guinea pig and she used to bring home all these concoctions and I used to hold my nose and hope for the best. So that was my first introduction. But uh, to make a long story short, uh, my wife and I were in the Philippines uh, just after we married about 20 years ago. And my wife developed a very serious case of insomnia that lasted nearly six years. And she couldn't sleep past midnight every night for six years. And so as a result of that, uh, we went on a, a long search. I ended up uh, doing some medical training at um, Wildwood Lifestyle Center and Hospital. And it was there that uh, my wife uh, actually um, discovered a herb called oat straw or vena sativa. And she was uh, looking to help someone else in the, in the providence of God. It actually helped her. And uh, within three days, she was back to eight hours sleep a night. And so that was sort of a nail in a short place. Um, we're really, really thankful that uh, God gave us some light there. Um, and as a result of, of seeing that herb work, we realized what condition she had because she hadn't had an official diagnosis. And so she had uh, a lot of um, nervous exhaustion that depleted her electrolytes that caused insomnia. And then on top of that, uh, we had some uh, further blessings from herbs. Um, we tried for years to have children, we couldn't, and my wife took a herb called Vitex or Chaseberry, and we didn't take in that herb. Uh, I think it was two weeks she was pregnant. Um, she did the same thing at the age of 42. We had a second child at uh, 43, and now we use herbs to keep up with them <laughs> and herbs to calm them down. So. That was the introduction, and then uh, my son had immune issues when he was born, and he 
introduced another herb called elderberry. And so that really was a great blessing as he was sick half his life. And so uh, it didn't necessarily stop him getting sick, but it greatly reduced the symptoms he had. And uh, he got to a point where he was hardly sick at all. So that was another nail in a short place. And so uh, as a result of that, ended up getting further studies, doing master herbalist studies and holistic health practitioner studies and also naturopathic studies. Um, and then ended up starting two herb shops, uh, online training, teaching at Andrews University and uh, doing lots and lots of seminars and workshops around the country. So that, uh, that was uh, it in a nutshell, how we got into it. And uh, we've been involved uh, with herbs uh, specifically for the last 10 years. My background is teaching applied physiology and anatomy. I uh, ended up teaching nutrition as well at Wildwood. And uh, so that was a good foundation for me to understand how to use herbs intelligently. So um, so here we are today, and uh, I'm looking forward to sharing with you all some, uh, some of God's treasure house of natural remedies that he's given us that we can use not only for first aid, but also for emergency medicine. And so often we think of herbs uh, that they take a long time to work and uh, they're not very effective and they don't have so much dramatic results as uh, pharmaceutical drugs. But um, actually often, the, uh, in, in many experiences, often that is not the case. They actually are quite fast and quite effective uh, if we know how to apply them intelligently uh, in the right way. So. I'm just going to throw my presentation up here. I hope you can see it all. All right. So uh, this is uh, my family. Uh, this was actually the beginning of my ministry. My kids have grown up a little since then. <laughs> so uh, I love the picture of the, the cross shining towards the Bible, illuminating the word herb. And what we uh, have the blessing of doing is educating people uh, not only from science, but also from God's word in using these principles of natural remedies. And I believe two of the lost remedies that we really need to know more than we do as a people is herbs and hydrotherapy. Uh, so tonight I won't be talking so much about hydrotherapy, but I do want to encourage everyone to start learning that as well. It's very, very effective, and you can also combine the two together. So tonight we're looking at herbs for first aid. And uh, let me tell you this, uh, we have used herbs quite a lot in regards to first aid for many, many conditions, from very common conditions, from scrapes and bumps and uh, itchy skin, uh, to breathing difficulties, to um, shock and trauma and all kinds of issues related to pain and injury. So we'll be covering some of the most common and serious applications of their use. And this is not in any way to suggest that we don't use uh, modern medicine and emergency medicine and 911, uh, but it does also help us to be prepared for emergency. And in many times, if you know how to use these things intelligently, then you won't need to call emergency help as often as you will need to. So um, I'm going to start with one of my favorite herbs, and it's called cayenne. Uh, many of you are familiar with cayenne. Uh, there are different types of cayenne. There are different types of uh, different uh, heat units that are attached to cayenne pepper. And uh, when I mention some of these herbs, I'm not necessarily saying it's something that you want to use as a food on a daily basis, but uh, as a medicine, they are very, very effective and very powerful. And just some of the most common uh, things that you can use this for is listed uh, on this slide here with common cold and flu, reducing arthritic pain, promoting digestion, stop hair loss, promote weight loss, warm cold hands and feet, stops bleeding, stops infection, reduce pain from shingles, decreases blood pressure increases libido. And those are some of the most common ones, but I want to dwell more on 
uh, some of the most serious ones, that being uh, heart attacks, stroke, and also uh, we mentioned they stop bleeding, but it's also extremely good for internal bleeding, um, serious hemorrhages, and uh, even when people had loss of limbs, it's actually saved many, many lives. And so uh, one of the things I highly recommend you, you do if you've got a first aid kit is put a cayenne pepper extract, all right? Not a tincture, tincture is alcohol based, but put an extract in your first aid kit. Uh, you can use this to apply under the tongue in the case of a heart attack or stroke. Uh, remember, if someone has a heart attack, you only have about six minutes, six to eight minutes at most before they die. Often between six and eight minutes, people end up as a vegetable if they do live. So uh, just keep in mind that this can not only can it uh, delay um, death in those situations, but in many cases, uh, or should I say delay, not delay death, that's, that came out wrong, so <laughs> it can give you more time to live before a heart attack kills you, uh, but it also can, uh, in many cases, actually abort a heart attack or even a stroke, and in many cases, if you take it afterwards as well, it can often reverse a lot of the damage. So cayenne pepper is a vasodilator. It helps with nitric oxide production, which causes a vasodilation. It also helps stimulate the heart contractility. It helps move the blood through the body very easily. Uh, it's what we call a diaphoretic herb. It will make you sweat. Um, it's very good for moving the blood through the body at a rapid rate. Now, one of the best ways to bring healing to any part of the body is to improve blood flow. And cayenne pepper does exactly that. Uh, now, what's very interesting about cayenne is if you take it for internal bleeding, it can cauterize the blood vessels that are damaged. But uh, you want to take note of this. It does not cauterize healthy blood vessels, only damaged blood vessels. It's very, very powerful. Now, you can uh, take this also. If you don't have an extract, you can mix it in water. I just want to make sure everyone understands you do not put cayenne pepper powder in the mouth directly. Okay, it will asphyxiate you, it will go in the lungs, and uh, it will do more damage than good. So uh, if you're going to use it, uh, use it wisely. You put it in water if you haven't got an extract. Uh, even if people have a heart attack, they often can still swallow water. So this can do wonders to help um, improve the blood flow. Even the microcirculation is affected. Many people who have migraines and headaches are greatly benefited by taking cayenne pepper. Now, a lot of people uh, don't like to use cayenne pepper because they feel it could cause stomach ulcers. Now, one contraindication is not to use it for a peptic ulcer. Now, if you're using it as a medicine, then you know the rewards outweigh the negatives. But if you're going to use it as a food item, uh, then you just may want to be aware that it is best taken with food, not on an empty stomach, and in low amounts with low heat units. So you do not use high heat units if you're going to take it as a food. So that would be uh, over 30, 35,000 heat units. All right. So you can also use cayenne topically. I do not recommend putting cayenne pepper in the eye or in sensitive parts of the body. You can apply it in an oil and you can use it in small amounts on your feet to warm your body up. Uh, you can also use it on various parts of the body where you want to increase blood flow. It particularly is useful if you apply it as a topical oil infusion in the thyroid gland. It can actually activate the thyroid to increase its T3 hormone and T4 hormone. So it's very, very useful. It does have a lot of applications. Anyway, I, uh, I gave a presentation, just, just one presentation on cayenne pepper a few weeks ago, and there's too many benefits to really cover in this presentation. But just keep in mind that cayenne pepper is excellent for promoting circulation and it's excellent as an emergency medicine to have on hand. 
if I only had two remedies or two emergency medicines in my first aid kit, it would be cayenne pepper and cayenne. Oh, sorry, cayenne pepper and charcoal. I'm sorry, I'm tying up my words here. All right, the next one I want to talk about is Jamaican dogwood. Now, this is not a common herb. Most people haven't heard this. In fact, uh, there are some herbalists that haven't even heard of Jamaican dogwood. Now, it does grow in Jamaica, hence its name, Jamaican. And it is a specific type of dogwood. It's not uh, one that you find here in the United States, but it's uh, very hard to get a hold of. Now, the thing that I found it very, very effective in is using for pain relief. And it's got some very powerful pain relieving chemicals in there that can help in multitudes of different painful experiences. For example, uh, it can help with neuralgia. It can help also uh, with uh, people who've had surgery pain or even cancer pain. Uh, we have used it for people who've had accidents. Uh, I'll just give you one uh, case that we had with uh, a gentleman. He's a, actually a friend of mine. His wife contacted us and let us know that he just had an accident with a circular saw and he was holding it with one hand and trying to chop a piece of wood. It went straight in his groin and severed his scrotum. And it was one millimeter away from severing his femoral artery, which is a major artery that goes down the leg. Now, uh, his, his wife found him full of blood. There was all this uh, tape around the house. The police came, the paramedics came, they took him away. And he was, as you would uh, understand, in a lot of pain. So we sent him some Jamaican dogwood and also some uh, CBD oil, which was not from marijuana, it was from hemp. And uh, I thought if it was me, I would like to have a couple of options in case one didn't work. And we combined Jamaican dogwood with, with uh, turmeric root and devil's claw and some licorice root and a little bit of cayenne pepper. And uh, he was so thankful. He uh, let me know that it worked better than all the painkillers that they gave him. And he was back to work just a short time after that. Uh, Jamaican dogwood is very effective. Now, there's not one herb that works for 100% of people 100% of the time, but I would say we've probably had at least 90% of people having uh, relief in some degree as far as pain goes with using Jamaican dogwood. We do turn it into an extract, and it's actually from the bark of the tree. It's not the the, the uh, flower, it's not the, the stems or leaf, it's the bark that you use and uh, you don't want to use too much. Um, so you, you, you've got to be careful you don't use uh, more than a teaspoon of the extract itself. Um, now there's another herb called Arnica and Arnica you can make into a salve. It's a beautiful flower. Um, it's used for many different conditions. One thing about Annika that sort of shines above other herbs in using for this type of emergency is if you have sprains or muscle injuries. And it is very good use topically. All right, you can take it internally as well, but generally it's made into a salve or cream and you can just rub that into the area. And it's very good for the bruises. It will help repair the wound quicker, it will help relieve some of the inflammation and, and pain. So Arnica is extremely good for that. Um, another common herb that is very effective is lemon balm. And uh, you know, there's a list here you, you can read about how it helps with many different functions from helping with sleep and rest and inflammation. Um, but something that is often not known about lemon balm is its effects for epilepsy. And so if someone is having an epileptic, epileptic attack, then you can give them some lemon balm. It's very calming to the nervous system and it's very relaxing um, and uh, it can work in a fairly short amount of time. Uh, so uh, this is often used in conjunction 
with other herbs. Now, passion flower is also another excellent herb that you can use if you don't have lemon balm. And you can also use this uh, topically. You can use this also, some people use it cosmetically. And uh, it's definitely got some wonderful medicinal properties in there. It's also very helpful for certain viral conditions. Uh, you have uh, people use it for herpes. And also, uh, if you've got cold sores, you can uh, get one of those lemon balm uh, lip balms. And you just put it on your lip there, and it can heal in a fairly short amount of time. An excellent herb for the digestive system is chamomile. And chamomile is extremely um, soothing for the digestive system. And it's very uh, good also for even infants as well as children. It tastes very yummy. And uh, I love a chamomile tea. It's got some beautiful properties to it. It helps relax the digestive system. It can bring calming to the GI system. You can also use it for colic and intestinal gas. And uh, if you've got some cramping in the stomach or some tummy upsets, just try using chamomile and it can help you in a short amount of time. Some people also use it for nausea or vomiting. Um, and uh, you can just make this into a tea. I would use one tablespoon per cup, an eight ounce cup of tea and uh, add a little bit of honey and it tastes out of this world. And here we have a uh, skull cap. Now skull cap, I mentioned this briefly before with lemon balm. It's a calmative herb. It's also very good for the nerves. So it feeds the nerves. It's very good for anxiety and it can help also with uh, reducing inflammation and even removing toxins from the body. Uh, in fact, there's some studies showing the benefits of skull cap for people who may have COVID. And so this is something that is very popular, especially in China, but it's also used by many different herbalists to help calm people, relax them if they've got stress. And in some cases, if they have insomnia, it can help uh, relax them and prepare them for sleep. Um, another excellent herb you may want to take in your first aid kit is turmeric. It's, uh, you may not be able to get some Jamaican dog, dogwood, but you, uh, I'm sure you get some turmeric fairly easily. And uh, think of it as gold. It's the color gold, and it's, it's uh, worth its weight in gold when it comes to helping the body with inflammation. And so we especially use this for people who have flare-ups, who arthritis. Um, it's very effective. It works very quickly. And uh, usually, usually uh, people recommend about a teaspoon of powder uh, that's in over the course of the day. And you may want to break that up into three, um, one third of the teaspoons. And you can add that to your food as well. It's very good for the immune system. It's also very good for healing, wound healing. Um, and there's some topical salves. We used to make salves with some turmeric in, but it would stain the clothes, so we stopped using it. But uh, nevertheless, it does work very well. Um, and one of the best herbs I've found topically that you could add to your first aid kit is calendula or pop marigold. Now, the official name is Calendula officinalis. And this is extremely good if you have, I remember a young lady who came to see me and she had um, uh, poison ivy and her face was so large, her eyes were so swollen that she couldn't see. And so uh, at the time, this was my first time I had tried it for uh, that particular condition. I wasn't sure how well it was work, but um, it's, it worked very effectively, and within about 24 hours, she was back to normal. Uh, we've also used it for eczema. We've used it for psoriasis, and also inflamed skin, burnt skin, damaged skin, uh, pretty much everything. The only thing I didn't see it work for, uh, as far as a skin condition, was cellulitis, and that may be because it's very hard to penetrate through that connective tissue, but... Um, 
in many things, even fungal conditions, it can be a great blessing. So uh, try using some of that. It's also good for itchy skin uh, or red skin, and even burnt skin. And so just apply that topically as a salve, as you see here, or you can also get some great calendula cream that absorbs very well. Okay, now this is a particular herb that you probably haven't heard of before. It's called lungwort. Lungwort, uh, the, the uh, botanical name is uh, Pulmonaria officinalis. And it's got a beautiful flower to it, very similar to comfrey, the flowers are. And I got into this actually from when COVID started uh, a few years ago in the early stages. Um, I was familiar with it a little bit before that, but I wasn't uh, very much using it. And uh, there, were, there was a, a lady that had some problems with breathing. She thought she had COVID. And uh, we gave her some lung wart, and uh, within it, 24 hours, she was back to normal. Uh, it's very, very good for a COPD conditions. And it's a bronchial dilator. Now, um, I don't have any uh, scientific evidence to back what I'm about to say up here. I'm just, I'm just sharing from an experience. I've looked, I've tried to find information on this online, but I haven't been able to. But I had a lady that um, called me just a couple of months ago and she had 85 percent lung damage and uh, so her, her lungs were very similar to fibrosis and it was a rare condition she was not a smoker and uh, she actually um, could hardly uh, get enough oxygen in her body the doctors gave her a short amount of time to live and i said to her i'm not sure how well this is going to work but um, the best herb I know of is lung wart. So she started taking it, and she was faithful in, in taking it. And just in a few weeks, she went back to her doctor, and she got a scan, and she found, uh, that to the doctor's amazement, that there was new lung tissue developing. Now, uh, those who are in the medical field who are listening, uh, you would know that uh, lung tissue does not grow back. Um, so this was quite a surprise to me. Uh, I'm not saying it will work for everyone. I'm not, I'm not saying uh, this is a miracle cure. Maybe the Lord did something spectacular out of the box. I don't know. I always tell people that it's not the herb that heals you. It's God that heals you. But the herb is a good reason for the Lord to work. Um, we're told we pray for a miracle and God directs us to natural remedies. And we're also told that when natural remedies are used according to God's will, it produces supernatural results. So uh, I was really surprised uh, to hear that story. I've had other people who've had other similar situations with uh, uh, COP conditions. Uh, it's very good for asthma. Uh, it's uh, very good for any congestive situations of the lung. Uh, it's mucolaginous. It helps as a, vasod, uh, as a bronchial dilator. So this is something I would encourage you to look into. Um, and uh, we've had very, very good results. It does seem to improve oxygen levels in the blood when people have taken this herb. Okay, let's look at another one that's very good for the lungs, and this is mullein. Now, mullein is um, commonly grown. You can find this growing in the United States. Uh, you just use the leaves. They're very good. If you have an asthma attack, uh, you can't use mullein. In fact, I was doing a talk on emergency medicine in Pennsylvania one time to a bunch of students. And that night I got called in to help a lady who had a severe asthma attack. And uh, she was, uh, her bronchial um, dilator was, was not working. And so we used some mullein. And we also uh, gave her uh, some hydrotherapy treatments and some things for stress. And uh, it worked very effectively. So mullein is uh, great to use for mild to moderate um, uh, 
uh, conditions of asthma attacks, and, and you can also use it for bronchitis. Uh, anyone with pneumonia as well could be benefit, benefited by taking mullen. And uh, you just don't, you don't want to take the seeds. I just want to give a contraindication there. You, you always use the leaf. And it uh, doesn't taste too bad. Put a little bit of honey. It's mucilaginous. It's very soothing to the bronchitis. Um, this is another excellent herb that many of you already know. This is comfrey. Uh, now, there are different kinds of comfrey. This particular one is the um, Symphytum officinalis. And uh, it's very good for healing bones, healing bones and tissue. Uh, it can help with tendons. It can help with torn ligaments. And uh, we've used this for many conditions. Now, I must just warn you here. I'm going to show you a slide. And if you don't like looking at wounds, I completely understand. So you may just want to just turn away for a few seconds. I'm going to show a slide of an open wound that was used with comfort. So, all right, here we go. So here's the uh, slide. Now, I got a call from a gentleman a couple of months ago, and he was a diabetic. He had this open wound you see on the left-hand side. And uh, I was very concerned when he sent this picture because, you know, um, you can have septic shock. Um, it's, he's already got a weak immune system. He's already got poor circulation. And so I told him, I said, you want to make sure that you deal with the infection first before you use comfrey. Otherwise, you could end up with an abscess being created and that could cause a lot of problems. So he uh, did a good, good job of cleaning it. And then he applied the comfrey. And I just spoke to him today, and he sent me this picture. And uh, he said uh, it's down to about a centimeter, as you can see there. So it's quite a big difference. Uh, comfrey uh, works very quickly. It's got a chemical called Allen Cohen, and it's a cell proliferator, and it's very good at building up cellular tissue. So it particularly shines with bones. If you have any bone breakages, uh, any even hairline fractures, uh, it works very quickly and also helps with pain relief as well. So I highly recommend using comfrey. Now, there's a lot of negative press with comfrey using internally. And uh, I, I just want to share this with you and take it for whatever it's worth um, from my studies into comfrey that um, the pyrolizidine alkaloids that are often seen as causing liver toxicity. Um, you, you have to take extreme amounts of comfrey in order to get toxic effects. Um, and there's a comfrey called uh, Symphytum uplandicum. It's a Russian variety of comfrey. And that's, that's where they've done the testing on rats. And uh, some of the studies show that the rat's liver is actually uh, damaged by the comfrey. Uh, but that was the Russian variety of comfrey, and most herbalists use the Symphytum officinalis, which is very low in pyrolysine alkaloids, um, and these are not highly toxic uh, alkaloids, um, but they can be if you isolate them and take them at large amounts. So uh, for what it's worth, me personally, I would have no problem taking comfrey internally, but I encourage you all to study that for yourself. Um, here we have the beautiful herb lavender. I love the smell of lavender. It is so beautiful. If you have any stress, just open up a bag of lavender and make a tea out of it. It is so soothing. There are 400 different types of lavender. This is the uh, Lavendula officinalis, and uh, this is the mother lavender or the Bulgarian lavender, the French lavender, it's all the same lavender. Uh, the most common lavender that you have in the store is lavender, or spike lavender, which is uh, actually a hybrid. Uh, they uh, wanted to get a more frost resistant lavender so it would withstand uh, changes in temperature, especially the cold. And so this particular lavender is very good for sleep. The most common lavender that's used is spike lavender, which 
act as a stimulant and keep you awake. So if you want to use lavender for sleep, this is the particular one that you would like to use. You can put it in a, a little bag, a little muslin bag, and put it under your pillow, and uh, it may help you to get to sleep faster. It's very, very good for burns as well. In fact, that's how uh, we learned about the effects of lavender from a French chemist who ended up putting his hand into a, a, a jar of lavender that saved him from a severe burn. And uh, lavender is used for many, many conditions, but where it shines the most is generally in anxiety and sleep and relaxation. So, uh, but uh, it can also help with headaches and migraines and uh, many other common complaints. So just try using some lavender. It's good to have in your first aid kit and lavender essential oil is something I highly recommend. You can put it in a diffuser and uh, it's also very good to put topically is in a carry oil. I do not recommend taking lavender no matter where it's from internally. And, and that goes with many other essential oils. I've worked with many essential oils, all different brands, and I have found that if they are not compatible with human physiology, because they are concentrated about a thousand times what's found in nature. And no matter how pure the oil is said to be, it is still not uh, well designed for digestion. Remember, what's in the plant is much, much weaker than what we put in our body. Um, anyway, I haven't got time to go into all the details. We could do a whole lecture on that, but uh, there are some issues with taking essential oils internally. However, there may be exceptions to that rule. Uh, this is the frankincense essential oil. There's seven different types of frankincense. And according to Leslie Harding, who was a very uh, scholarly um, uh, theologian when it came to the sanctuary, he said that this particular uh, frankincense here, or the Boswellia uh, serrata, was the one that they used in the sanctuary. It was often used in cases of healing, as it says in James, for those who are sick to call the elders and anoint with oil. They used to anoint people with olive oil infused with some frankincense oil. That frankincense was used uh, on the priest uh, garments. It was used in the sanctuary itself. And it was very, very effective in helping with stress, relief, anxiety, and even pain. So if you want to take one essential oil, I would highly recommend you take this uh, in your first aid kit. It's a great antimicrobial. It can help with some of the uh, most severe uh, painful conditions. We've used this also topically in salves and it works very effectively for joint pain. So um, try, try, try it out. It can also help uh, this, with uh, black spots that you have on the skin. If you've got any discoloration, you could use this in a carry oil and it can help remedy some of those black spots. Okay, we mentioned before about calendula. I'm going to uh, skip this one. Okay, this is a hair called Feverfew. Um, now, Feverfew is very good for fevers and it's very good for headaches and migraines. In fact, it's one of the best herbs that you could take for a severe migraine. Now, if you want to add some extra benefits to that, I would recommend you put your feet in hot water, a cold ice pack on the back of your head, uh, just on your occiput, and leave it there for about 15 minutes, and make sure your feet are in hot water that covers your ankles because there's temperature receptors at the ankles that will cause vasodilation to your feet and will draw the blood from the cranial cavity and thus relieving the pressure on the vascular tissue and some of the nerves and that should relieve some of the headache. So try fever with you if you've got headaches or migraines and it works very well. Remember these are not a substitute for poor lifestyle habits. We always have to get to the cause. So if you've eaten something you shouldn't have, or you've been highly stressed, or you've been dehydrated, make sure that you make those changes. Because herbs work better when we are better informed and we're following 
God's laws of health. Uh, this is another powerful herb, garlic. It is antimicrobial. It's a very powerful antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal, and it's also antisocial. So take it with friends and you'll be just fine. Well, garlic helps in relieving blood pressure. If you've got someone that's extremely high in blood pressure, uh, try some garlic, try foot baths, try some hot packs to the kidneys. Um, also give them some little bit of frankincense oil and help them with a cup of lemon balm tea and that blood pressure can lower quite significantly. Uh, so garlic is excellent. Uh, now there is a concentrate called Alimed that we have recommended as a natural antibiotic. It's very effective. Uh, it's a little bit expensive, but I highly recommend it. We personally do not sell it, but uh, you can get it from many different distributors. Uh, one place I'd recommend is the mustard seed in Newport, Tennessee. They have probably the cheapest uh, supply of Alimed there. All right, and aloe vera. What would we do without aloe vera? Aloe vera is so effective for so many complaints, especially with the GI. It's very good for any inflammation in the intestines. It's also extremely good as a first aid remedy if you have burns. And you can just slice that leaf in two, get that gel out and just put it directly on the burn and usually within a few seconds, you don't even know that you had the burn. Uh, it's extremely effective. It rarely leaves any marks behind uh, after you've applied it. And uh, it's not itching to the skin. And it's very, very soothing. You can use this in many different ways. It's also a very powerful antiviral. Uh, it can help with millions of conditions from colitis to, to um, Crohn's disease, irritable, irritable bowel syndrome, and many, many others. So this is something you may want to take with you. And we also have an aloe vera wound gel that we use in cases of burns. It's a lot easier if you have a plant growing in your home, but sometimes you're out and you need something quick. Uh, this is Oregon grapefruit. Now, the grapes themselves are very effective for many different conditions, from stomach complaints to antimicrobial, but the actual root itself is extremely, extremely powerful as an anti, uh, antibacterial. Uh, it's also very, very effective if you have um, some resistant uh, bacteria like MRSA, where the actual uh, bacteria starts to pump out the and they have these little pumps in their bacteria that actually get rid of the antibiotics so it doesn't get destroyed. Well, Oregon grapefruit sabotages a mechanism so that antibiotic can actually do its work. But this is of itself a natural antibiotic. And so it's very, very effective. It's got powerful chemicals in there like berberine and different alkaloids that can help with many, many different antimicrobial conditions. So try it out. It's uh, excellent to use and uh, I highly, highly recommend. It doesn't taste very good. It's very bitter. Just want to warn you about that. <laughs> okay. And then we have another herb called plantain. Uh, this grows all around the world and uh, except maybe the south and north pole, but anywhere you've got vegetation, you can find plantain. It's a powerful astringent it can be used in emergency medicine if you're out in the woods and you get stung by something, maybe a, a bee or snake, uh, you can actually uh, get this leaf, crush it, and spit on it, and then put it directly on the wound. It acts as an antimicrobial, but also it's got tannins, it's got a strong astringent in there that can draw out that poison from the body. It's also very good for um, if you have uh, uh, wrinkles, uh, it can help with the skin, not that that's first aid related, but just for those ladies who are interested. Uh, but just think of this as on hand charcoal. All right, if you don't have charcoal and you've got bitten, it's actually very good for irritated skin or even inflamed skin. Um, if, if you had 
some wound even, it's excellent for that as well. So try plantain. God has put this uh, all around us so that we have constant access to some of these remedies. Okay, this is one you may not see quite common. Um, it's uh, lamb's ear. And that's its a common name. Um, I'm trying to think of this other one now. Woolly hedge nettle. That's it. Woolly hedge nettle. Um, when I was working in a medical clinic in Maine, just outside the clinic, we had this available. And uh, many people don't realize that these are actually wound bandages. In fact, those leaves, you can just rip them off. They have extremely high absorptive properties. Uh, they can actually soak up. In fact, ladies used to use them as tampons to actually soak up the, the, the blood. And uh, soldiers used to use this in, in combat to act as bandages when they had severe casualties. Um, and it just mops up the blood and also coagulates or it uh, stops the bleeding. Um, and uh, it's very, very effective. And you don't need anything else but just to stick it on there. And so it dries up the wounds and it also brings healing and prevents infection. So it's an excellent herb to use for first aid. If you have a little garden, you may want to consider growing some of this lambs. You can also take it internally as a tea. It's not toxic to the body and uh, it works very effectively. Now, I know this isn't a herb, but it's something worth mentioning, and that is bentonite clay. There are different types of bentonite clay. You have calcium and sodium bentonite clay. Uh, you, the, the one that you can use internally is the calcium bentonite clay. And uh, a lot of people use this for um, poisons that they want to bind to. Now, I would just like to share this with you, that bentonite clay, or clay in general, is better to use externally than charcoal. But charcoal is better to use internally than clay. Now, there are times you can take uh, clay internally, but in most cases, you'll be better using charcoal. There are conditions such as, um, uh, such as, uh, I'm trying to think now, di diverticulitis. Diverticulitis uh, clay works better than charcoal. But for most gastric conditions, I would use charcoal as a clay. Um, it's very effective. It's, uh, it pulls out, pull, pulls out poisons. Um, I remember after my wife gave birth to our son, she had severe mastitis. And charcoal didn't work, but clay did. And it worked very, very effectively and very quickly. So clay is extremely high in minerals. It's got great capacity to pull properties out of the skin. Um, uh, some of the best cosmetic clay is actually green clay or French clay. And that has a smaller pore it can get in the skin and it can clean out the properties of uh, the bacteria and it can just be more effective at pulling through the, through the skin than, than bentonite clay. Um, and, uh, but nevertheless, clay in general is very, very effective. You can pull poison out of the skin, even better than charcoal. If you've got a sting, or if you get bitten by a snake. Um, you know, I remember when I was at Wildwood, we had a camping trip, and this lady was walking behind two young men, and one of them picked up a yellow jacket's nest, and it attacked the woman, and she had 30 stings. She went into an anaphylactic shock, and it was in the middle of nowhere. There were no hospitals around. She would have been dead by the time they got there. And so um, they used clay. They used clay on those stings, and uh, her blood pressure went to the zero over zero. And so it was very, very serious. If someone has an anaphylactic shock, you put them in a bathtub and put some clay in there, put a pound of clay in, it, in the bathtub, and it can take care of the anaphylactic shock. Charcoal will also do the same thing. So this is very powerful. It's something you can use for many topical conditions. Be careful about using it internally. Uh, just make sure you understand the, uh, the condition and what risks may be posing to you if you take it internally because charcoal is very 
sorry, clay is very concentrating, as also is charcoal, but you have to use a lot of water and make sure you don't ever use it more than a few days because it can be very concentrated. And uh, when we move on to charcoal, and charcoal, as I said, is very effective internally. Uh, I prefer to use coconut charcoal. And uh, coconut charcoal is very dense, it's very hard. They use it from the shells, and uh, it's, it's incinerated at very high temperatures, and it makes a great charcoal. You can buy this from buyactivatedcharcoal.com. And it's not abrasive, it doesn't taste as bad as standard charcoal. And uh, you can even give this to children, it's non gritty. Um, and uh, you don't need to take as much, it goes a long, long way. But it's not good for Persian carpets, so make sure that you uh, don't put it uh, in, your, in your lovely living room, make sure that you always handle it with care. And when you open the container, you have to be careful not breathing in that dust. So you can mix this with water and take it from a myriad of conditions. If you go into a third world country, you want to always make sure that you take charcoal with you. It's very good if you get any stomach infections, any, um, any condition to diarrhea. Um, it can help with uh, stings and bites and it can mop up poisons. It's, it, in fact, it's used to save multitudes of life if people are ingested poisons. Uh, it's often used in hospitals in emergencies where people have ingested uh, things that could take their life. So charcoal is extremely effective. This deserves a full presentation just on this topic. So uh, anyway, I know most of you already know the benefits of charcoal, but it's definitely something I would take in my first aid kit. Uh, and just keep in mind that your kitchen is also your first aid kit, all right? Whether it be a cabbage, an onion, a potato, a pig, See in the Bible, fix you use for boils. Uh, there's many, many different foods you have in your kitchen cabinet. Maybe we'll save that for another day that you can use for first aid also. So remember, food is your medicine, and your medicine should be also your food, right? So I'll just leave it with there because my time is up, but we'll have some Q&A time. So feel free to jump in with your questions. Thank you so much, Dr. Pollard. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you, but I can't see you. Oh, you can't see me. Okay, let me, I'm going to exit out this. This is probably, there, can you see me now? No, I can't see you. <laughs> no, oh no, okay. Well, it looks like the chat is saying that they can see both of us. So as long as you oh, can okay. hear me, um, okay. as long as you can hear me, I can um, ask questions. Um, Go ahead. All right. So Kathleen asks, can you share some herbs useful after childbirth for pain and healing? Mm. Okay. So yes, uh, for pain. Yeah, there are some herbs that you can definitely take uh, for pain. Uh, I guess it would depend on what kind of pain uh, you're, you're, you're talking about. Um, but if it was, for example, a pain of, um, I used to say, a vaginal tear, um, then I would use some uh, calendula cream to help uh, with that and also some comfrey. Um, and then internally, you can also use uh, some turmeric root. Um, now, a lot of people worry about side effects of herbs you know, during um, lactation, but uh, there's really not a lot of research I've seen. Um, there's more concern in the first trimester of pregnancy than there is in lactation. But um, there are certain herbs that can affect the milk production. But that being said, uh, if, if you take something like turmeric, that would help a lot for pain. You can also take white willow or some wild lettuce seed. Uh, as I said before, Jamaican velvet could also be used, but it's very hard to get a hold of. Um, 
So those are some other things. And what's the other one? Um, mentioned pain and uh, pain and healing. Healing, yes. So yeah, I mentioned that with the comfrey. Uh, if there was any tears or anything, that would be a good one. Okay, awesome. And, and along those lines, we had another question from Nat saying, uh, what are some safe herbs for a cold during pregnancy um, and how much in what form? Okay, so with a cold, um, yeah, I, I personally uh, don't have any problems using elderberry uh, during pregnancy. Um, it's great for common colds, and it's also very good for flu and upper respiratory tract infection. So that would be a very good a first go-to herb. You can also combine it with ginger. Uh, ginger you can take also during pregnancy. You just don't want to take more than five grams uh, per day. So those are things that I would use. And also hydro hydrotherapy would be mm -hmm. another excellent one. Awesome. Adventist coffee, we call it. <laughs> Cotton cold shower. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, Alnella, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it that, uh, that right, but she asks, can herbs be used for eye tissue issues? For example, a sty, or would hydrotherapy be the best application in this area? Yes, you can actually. Now what I would use for a sty would be some, um, eye bright, some eye bright. Yeah, now that's a particular herb. It's, it's hard to get hold of. You can get some organic tea bags with eyebright. If you make a tea out of it, you just get a little dropper and make sure it's room temperature. You don't want it hot. And just one drop of that in your eye. It's not going to burn the eye. It's not like putting cayenne in your eye. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's probably not recommended, I would imagine. Yeah, no. <laughs> Now, okay. It depends, on the is. it depends on the style. If if if, if it's not um, right on the eye, it's like near the eye. I would recommend mm -hmm. some coconut oil, mm -hmm. and then hot and cold treatments to the eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but not too hot. If it's not directly on the eye, you're just putting it over mm -hmm. the skin. Got you. Excellent. Okay. D asks, what herb is good for kidneys? Okay. It depends on what type of kidney problems you have, but uh, just as a general thing for kidney health, I highly recommend nettle, stinging nettle. It's very, very high nutrition. Now, if you have a kidney infection, then you may want to look at juniper. Juniper berries are very good for the kidneys. Uh, now, if you have kidney stones, then I would recommend some herb called Chancra Piedra. That's C H A N C A P I E D R A. Chancra Piedra. And it's also known as Stone Breaker. And I've had some skeptics that didn't believe in herbs and they thought, well, I may as well try it. And uh, it did one. So uh, we've had a few people with kidney stones try that, and it's worked very, very well. So um, you can also use it for gallstones, uh, also. Oh, excellent. We actually had another question uh, asking what can dissolve gallstones. So I think you answered that one as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, let's do one more, um, as then we'll wrap up here. How someone asks, how would someone begin the journey to become an herbalist? Okay, <laughs> don't go to herbal schools. <laughs> okay. Um, well, you know, I'm always reluctant to tell people where I got my education because in every herbal training school, no matter what level from college to university, they always have some new age. That being said, uh, I actually put a course together uh, for people to become herbalists uh, without going through all the things they didn't have to learn. So um, there's a website called lightingtheworld.org. Uh, it's the Light Ministry, L-I-G-H, which stands for Lay, uh, for the Lay Institute of, of Global Health Training. It's based at Wildwood. 
and I was asked to do the teaching. I put the training together, and so um, I'm I'm the main teacher there, and so uh, yeah, that that would be a good place to start. Um, if you just want to do a crash course in learning how to make herbal remedies, uh, send me an email and I'll, I'll send you a link to that. Um, but if you want to be a herbalist and, and teach it, uh, that course I would highly recommend um, because it sort of channels you into what you need to know and help you get there as fast as possible. So we cover about a thousand different herbs. And we also do practical training that you get to see how to make the herbs into various things like extracts and saps and so forth. So uh, we also do workshops where we train. And if you want, want us to come to uh, a uh, church near you to do a seminar, um, I'd be happy to do that also. We do a lot of church seminars as well as workshops. So, so yeah, uh, there is a good book out there also, the uh, Lost Art of Herbal Remedies, and that's a really good one to get. And uh, there's also handbooks like Green Pharmacy or Herbal Handbook that is very good for the average lay person. If you're a medical person, you may appreciate uh, Medical Herbalism by uh, David Hoffman, who's a medical herbalist. Um, but if you're just an average lay person just wants to know what herb I can use for various conditions, I'd recommend green pharmacy. That would be a good one to, to use. Excellent. Now, I have someone asking, what was that website address again? Light? Light in the world. Do you want me to write it in? Let me um, yeah, if you want to add that to the chat, and if you also want yeah. to add your email address to the chat, we have some people asking for that. Okay. Yes. Um, oh, uh, there. All right. My email, I'll put my email up here. It's lee.hhp at gmail.com. I'll just put that in the chat there. Um, Excellent. Feel free to uh, write to me. I get a pretty busy schedule. I've got to get to Pennsylvania. In a short amount of time, so I may not be able to get back to you straight away, but that's the email that you can get me. Um, and, uh, Fantastic. Yeah, we we have on our website. Um, I probably should put our website up there. <laughs> <laughs> we have different videos uh, on different topics, if you and recipes and different things on our website. It's American Herb Shop. Uh, dot com shop is s h a p p e so uh, feel free to to uh, get some information there as well Excellent. but uh, yeah any way we can help you verbally let us know um, we occasionally do consultations with people um, but we don't advertise it <laughs> <laughs> um, you really need well, help and, uh, yeah. Try to put you in maybe a few weeks. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Wellard, for um, another incredible presentation. I And thank you, everyone who's joined. I, I know we've all enjoyed it. Um, if you wouldn't mind closing out with, with prayer, we'd really sure. appreciate that. Amen. Yes, we be happy to. Father in heaven, thank you so much for everyone that's came tonight. And Father, we just give you the honor and glory and praise for making these wonderful humble instruments that can serve humanity and lord we pray that you'll help us to become intelligent to their use and help us lord to know uh, specifically how to apply them in a way that will not only be helpful to ourselves but will also be helpful to those around us we thank you in the precious name of jesus our savior amen Amen. Again, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, make sure you join us the third Thursday of every month. Um, I know we kind of postponed um, this week, 
but usually it's the third Thursday of every month. So make sure you join us in November at 8 p.m. Eastern time, third Thursday of the month. And we look forward to seeing you, Dr. Dr. Wellhard. Thank you again so much for joining us uh, for the third time here at ASIR. So we really, really appreciate you. It's been a blessing. Thank yeah. you so much, Chrissy. Yeah. Thanks, all everyone. Right. God bless you all. <laughs> Load up those first aid kits. <laughs>